This is Movies, a podcast by the Active Cinema. And with me today, looking half a man lighter, is Hans. Hans, how are you doing tonight? You're also looking very pale, very gaunt. You seem ill. I, I'm a little I'm a little sweaty, too, because uh, I didn't realize how late it was. So all I could have for dinner in like two minutes was a cup of noodles. Uh, so I just had vapor all over my face and had to, you know, eat all that cancer in a cup. You know, it's not great that you have this giant beanie on your head too. Like you're just you're getting well from cancer. It's the it's the it's very yeah, Jimmy it's the same one. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not good, especially for the sweat. I'm just not gonna wear that. Anyway, well, no, now cancer. you really look like you have cancer. Yeah. Maybe we'll maybe we'll <laughs> put that into the next movie. Hey, it's Jerry. Jerry's back with us. Jerry, how you doing? Jerry's got Dunkin' Jerry. Donuts. He's on mute and bragging about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. That's what I was just saying. I wasn't laughing at the Hans cancer joke. I was saying, yeah, I got some Dunkin' Donuts. Hashtag ad. And just got nice. the liquor in that cup. <laughs> yeah, it's just straight <laughs> brain alcohol. <laughs> All right. At, at my new workplace, uh, at lunch today, I think I was the only person not drinking, like getting drunk there. And I was saying, like, this guy drives a forklift. I don't know. I don't, this might be kind of cool and blue collar and hey guys, but you drive a forklift. <laughs> Maybe don't. That's, that's that what they're able to do that without committing suicide, right? Yeah. Well, that was the great thing about working as a carpenter back when I did is everybody you work with starts drinking at five in the morning, right before they go to work. That's just how those jobs go. Right before they yeah. start using a fucking skill saw. Yep. Yep. That's right. <laughs> right before uh, they got on someone's roof. To face it yeah. for the winter, yeah. Don't worry, I'm going to make your house safer. Give me a couple of bottles of liquor, though. A lot of those jobs wound up going very late into the night for some reason, too. Because I think people just were fucking wasted the entire first, like, just four hammered. hours of the day. So we'd well, be yeah, there, we're... like, sundown, fucking hammering away at someone's porch. Someone's trying to watch. They kept trying to watch Treme, the HBO show. <laughs> so you'd hear the theme song, uh, down in the Treme. Yeah. And that would be, like, them trying to listen to it over the fucking hammering and the saws and everything going on at late in the afternoon. But we're talking about a movie that's <laughs> not particularly blue collar. As a matter of fact, it's rather white collar, white Christmas, white collar Christmas. We're talking about Scrooge from 1988 tonight. Richard Donner's Bill Murray comedy classic Scrooge with uh, uh, Bobcat Goldwaith, who we've talked about on Civic TV and also yeah. David Johansson of the New York Dolls, Buster Poindexter, hot, hot, hot. Uh, that is someone for maybe you to relate to, Hans. Hot, hot, hot. Buster Poindexter. No? You want to pull up Buster Poindexter, hot, hot, hot? He's the cabbie in the film. Now, uh, Jerry, if I remember correct, this is a favorite of yours. This is actually yeah. uh, one of the reasons why I picked it out for this show. But also, I just always enjoyed Scrooge. Yeah, I mean, I, I think because I started watching it as a kid, you know, when you ever like develop uh, traditions around Christmas, mm. my brother and I would watch Scrooge and then now I'm older, fucking I just keep that same tradition, but by myself. So I, I've seen it like almost every single year for like 28 years. It's great. And, you know, uh, I watched it. I remember seeing it when I was like seven or eight years old and it's creepy. You know, uh -huh. the, the ghosts in the movie are particularly creepy. I mean, that's always an aspect to A Christmas Carol and A Christmas Carol adaptations that I enjoy is the supernatural, haunted, ooh, spooky, Halloween-y aspects. But in this movie, I think they really sell that with that first ghost especially, who is, his, I guess it's supposed to be the Jacob Marley surrogate, which is the former network president. We have a fucking mouse and a golf ball popping out of his head. <laughs> popping out of his head. Mm -hmm. That's a great... That whole head is such a good effect. It's got that the dust that comes off of it constantly. I love I love that scene. It's so well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when I said, hey, you guys want to watch Scrooge tomorrow? Hans then says, what, the Jim Carrey one? <laughs> I said, no, Scrooge. And I capitalized the D. And he said, oh, I haven't seen the new Netflix one. And I said, yeah. no, Hans, <laughs> Scrooge. <laughs> Did you just think I was? Never, did you think that's how it was spelled, or I was typoing or something? Yeah, I just never seen this one either. So you know, you know, my track record with Christmas movies, I've seen like three. Uh, Have you caught up? One of them? No, oh. not at all. Okay. No. Well, I'm, there's uh, a couple weeks left in December. There's a uh, Pinocchio, right? That's new. I don't give a that's fuck a about Christmas Pinocchio. Movie. That's not a Christmas movie, even. <laughs> oh, is it not? Oh. 
No. I thought it was come out in December, <laughs> then maybe they made a this Christmas Pinocchio. There's Some a whale. Movies come out during December, it's true. Yeah. Either of you guys excited about the whale with Brendan Fraser? Yeah. yeah, I didn't know what the plot was of it. You know, I'd just been seeing the the stills of just super fat Brendan Fraser or whatever. Uh, but now that I have a better still, idea of the... The one still they put out, which is a poster, and it's <laughs> yep. like every promotional image just him, him looking very oh. just fat and no. deer in the headlights. The several, the several stills that they put out for the massive oh, oh. marketing run that it's had for like the last two months. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't no. watch American television. I saw, <laughs> it's I like, not not on television, all on the internet. Anyways, no, I saw a bunch of the screenshots for it. I had no idea what the fuck it was about, and then now I know a little bit more of the plot. It looks fucking great. It what looks is it about? Great. Yeah, uh, the the popular consensus take that I've seen with like YouTubers uh, has been. Well, the movie's kind of whatever, but Brendan Fraser's great, and then they go into like why the movie is kind of like waffling, and uh, it raised my interest in it. Actually, mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, well, that doesn't sound that bad. It sounds kind of interesting." So, so what's I don't know. The story. I well, it's about a fat gay man with a daughter, and he's gonna die or something because he's so fat. Yeah. And uh, she's like, "Hey, you gotta stop eating," and he just can't help himself. Or I don't know. I didn't. It's I don't. Fuck that's know. basically. I didn't read it. anything. That's that's basically it. That's what I got from it. Yeah, I think that's ge just generally what what to expect. It's probably gonna be like uh, you ever see that movie Fatso with Dom De Louise? <laughs> no. Well, no. it was probably a lot like that movie, but not as funny because Dom not De Louise is a treat. Not to like digress too much from the from the topic. Just that film. I don't know. The quality of it could be an overall like B or even like a C plus or whatever. I think it's just uh, nice to see something different. There's been like a lot of action this year that was kind of like schlocky action, bullshit action. Um, there's another like Indiana Jones coming out, another Avatar coming out, like a bunch of shit I don't give a fuck about. So anytime it's like a movie that's not a popular IP uh, and it doesn't have like fucking, I don't know, uh, an actor that I, I normally would see. 20 times a year i'm like i'm sold instantly I, I, it's what is, great is chalamet not in, not in this is he not like a part of this movie who no no that's Tim bones Tim. and all that's it <laughs> just, he's on everything he was chalamet. in everything he was in everything for a oh, couple Timothy of years chalamet? oh god yeah he might be he actually he might be in it you know he's the I didn't daughter know he was in the french <laughs> dispatch and i was like as halfway through the french dispatch and he shows up and i'm like this motherfucker's in everything <laughs> I haven't checked my shit, but he's probably in there too. Well, you he's know. supposed to be uh, good, I guess, in Bones and all. I don't know. He just kind of acts the same in everything. He never changes it up. Dude, I loved The King, but not because of him. Oh, The King. I know. I haven't seen The King with uh, Robert oh. Patton. Doesn't he have like retarded, fucked up teeth or something? Didn't he do back to back retard roles that Robert Pattinson between that no. and what was it, The Rover? That one, that one he's uh, like a French Duke. He's like oh. a really fucking prissy French duke who's always like, ho, ho, you think you can't beat me in a sword fight? Ho, ho, ho. And then they have a sword oh, fight. Oh, does he have that accent? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I frequently confuse yeah, the different. French and retarded people. So that's. No, people do why. that all the time. Wow. Yeah. See, this is this is an easy mix up. Look at that face. Well, <laughs> he's like mocking him or some shit like that. Mm. <laughs> I'll check that out at some point because the director is very solid. I think what is his name? David Michaud, who uh, directed Animal Kingdom, the the Australian film. So he's usually good. Um, Richard Donner did Lethal Weapon. Richard Donner did Superman the movie. We did cut. To, actually, we talked about Lethal Weapon, all three of us, yeah. on an earlier episode. I think that was just oh, going to yeah. be a buddy cop themed show, and we really just wound up talking about Lethal Weapon for most of it. So we've got a recurring trend here. Um, Hans, what is your general sense? You know, you're a very Bill Murray esque character. Um, yeah. What do, what do you? Yeah. How, how do you Ladies. feel about Bill Murray's film career? Uh, I think uh, there's been faces, like very different faces, as to what he's done. Uh, I, something that I was mentioning to you guys in the in the group chat is that uh, uh, he's like the ugliest ladies' man from the '80s, I think, where he's got the worst hairline in Hollywood. And worse than like Jack Nicholson, and oh, yeah. for whatever reason, he always plays like the the charismatic uh, guy that always gets the girl, even though he's got like pock marks and he's not particularly like he's got like a fat head. Uh, even though he's like 
Like he's not never, fat. He's like he's got John no, C. Riley's body yeah. and structure, which is a fat man's head and face, but like a normalish body. Yeah, like a barrel, barrel chest, and like not not really skinny, but not fat, but just his head is always like very big, and he has a like horrible hairline. But um, I I I kind of like his career because I feel like it's it's uh evolved with his age too. There was a time where he was just playing like quirky old man, and he was just pop up on on different movies and just either play like sad old guy or just like kind of wise old guy or what's that lost in translation movie where he's like a horny old guy but he's like lost understated. in translation that's, that's right that's the movie right uh so uh uh i don't know i like him i i it's it's funny to uh i don't even want to say rediscover because i've, I've had never seen this before but uh getting back to those 80s where um where he was you know the the charismatic like top guy in a movie and and uh playing that character well yeah look looking like that <laughs> i think it's refreshing i think this might actually be my favorite bill murray role of the 80s even over uh you know ghostbusters and and stripes mm -hmm. uh, but there's so many actually you know what no actually no Qu quick change is 1990 Quick Change is the end, I think, of Bill Murray's solid run of leading comedy films. Unless he had something else in the 90s that I'm not thinking of. Off the well, top. Groundhog Day was 93. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's, Kingpin, that's a pretty good one. Kingpin was 96. Kingpin was kind of underrated for a bit. I haven't seen that in a while, so I can't speak on it currently. But I remember that being much funnier than I thought it would be. And uh, so you don't like his... Um... <sighs> Fuck, what's his, the Wes Anderson run? I don't mind it, but it's not a favorite of mine. I think it's the right career choice for somebody like that where your shtick gets old or it falls out of like popular fashion and you need something else yeah. to do. So he, he made the right choice there, playing the artsy older guy in all these movies. Okay, well, I don't know. I Okay, all right. Okay, well, all right. That's not exactly what's going on there, guys. Come on. So... Bill Murray is not a guy who's like, he's not classically trained, right? He doesn't have a dude that sits around with them and help him uh, get in and out of different types of characters before films. He mostly, for the vast majority of his career in this movie and in Ghostbusters, notoriously in Ghostbusters, he's just doing a Bill Murray bit, right? Mm -hmm. Where he's like, hey, it's me, I'm Bill Murray, right? And they just kind of let him go off and do his shit. That's the, the thing with fucking Groundhog's Day, right? That's the thing with fucking yeah. Stripes, like all of those films. The idea was just like let Bill Murray do as much cocaine as possible before the movie. Caddyshack and and don't yeah Caddyshack mm -hmm. and just don't tell him no right. Over time we get to the '90s where co comedy has a very specific um, avenue that it's going towards right, and you get a lot of like road trip movies, you get a lot of like rom coms and shit like that, and getting farther away from the two the two dorky guys, which is like that's the Bill Murray thing, right? right. Bill Murray is the main guy. From the two dork dorky guys and then you had a couple more for ghostbusters but like that's the primary uh primary thing and so he he does quote unquote redirect but this is at the same time that wes anderson is doing his experimental uh fake french new wave right where he's like i'm gonna make a french new wave film but I'm, it's just not gonna be french and it's not gonna be a new wave film but it's gonna be all the stuff that was in the french new wave film uh french. and i want to <laughs> i want to do that <laughs> I want to do that in a way that people understand what's going on, but don't necessarily think I'm aping from it. Bill Murray, a guy that knows a little bit about those acting styles, is like, yeah, I'll do some of that with you, right? And they, along with fucking uh, Owen Wilson, obviously Luke Wilson, um, and fucking uh, which which what's the Coppola? Uh oh, Jason Schwartzman. Yeah, Jason Jason mm -hmm. Schwartzman. Jason. Schwartzman, thank you. They start exploring with these formulas in acting and filmmaking that nobody has done for like 30 or 40 years, right? So the characters Bill Murray is playing are based off of concepts that are laid out in the late, late 40s, 50s, and 60s in France uh, by people like Jean-Luc Godard and shit like that, right? So he's he didn't just turn into a guy that does like, oh, I'm the old wise guy on the thing. He's playing a certain archetypes laid out in other films that we've dissected and turned into all kinds of other stuff in different genres or whatever. And he's basically honing that character back down to what it originally was. 
for each of these Wes Anderson films. And so like when you get to something like the French Dispatch, where it's like presupposed at the beginning that this character is probably going to be dead by the end of the film, but we're gonna uh, like kind of watch out this like bit. Spoilers. It's fucking two years old, that's your own fault. <laughs> 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 it, you, you get this idea like so you you get to watch the tragedy of the final moments, but the character is both aware and unaware. And Bill mm. Murray articulates that. Like he very much in his in his portrayal of that character knows he's supposed to die, but is like, I'm still just doing my job as as part of the film, right? Um it, he's not just turned into a great actor. He's turned into a masterful actor. And it's weird yeah. that at the same time that he's doing these Wes Anderson films, he's also cutting in like zombie land fucking cameos where he just Garfield, is himself. Garfield, Garfield, Garfield and Osmosis awesome <laughs> Jones. <laughs> yeah. All this other shit. These are all like post empire films, wherever you're like riding off into the sunset, right? You, you don't have to do anything. You're Bill fucking Murray. I'll show up and do a voice on Osmosis Jones. Who gives a fuck? But he's also doing some of the hardest films, at least in in terms of out, outside of like effects and shit. Some of the hardest films to act in, he's doing constantly. Um, you know, with Wes Anderson, not to suck too much Wes Anderson dick, but I just mean like it's not as narrow as he's an old guy doing old guy stuff now. It's more like because he's an old guy, there's a character he can play, and he he's like using that as the conduit to these different, you know what I mean, like stories. Does it make sense? It makes yeah. sense to me, Hans. I don't think you followed that at all. Do you guys know that he played MDR? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen this. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, a... that's that's rough going, right? I forgot right, right. he played Franklin Roosevelt. <laughs> well, you can't you can't win them all, right? That's the lesson there. St. Vincent, Rock the Casbah, A Very Coming Murray Christmas. Two. Have either of you guys seen A Very Murray Christmas? I don't no. think I have. I think I mean, it was, I, th I know it says TV special, but I think I've seen the thumbnail for it on YouTube. It's uh, unbearable and very pretentious and very Sofia Coppola in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, I, how do you feel about her, uh, Jerry? Because she has... I think she might have dated Wes Anderson at a point or something. So she's got a lot of similar tendencies, but hers don't seem as disciplined or as um, refined as as Wes Anderson's. So kind of, I've always felt like it's a a, tr a trust fund situation, right? Where someone <laughs> is talented enough to be able to perform in the field, but the only reason why they can is because you know. Uh, whatever amount of money that they had put in the bank for them before. And in this case, she's a Coppola, right? So she she can learn the vast majority of the process um, and how to construct and execute a film. And once she sees a style that she wants to do, sure, she can she can do it. But it just feels like, uh, like I don't know, like it's like a, not to say fake, right? But it's just inorganic. Mm -hmm. is what it is it's very inorganic like you could just you can just buy your way into making you know what i mean uh, the grand budapest hotel rather than fucking hiding out in front of uh studios and trying to like run up and be like hey here's my script motherfucker you know like it's way it's way different she doesn't have any of that kind of like passionate edge to it that you would get from like a wes anderson film or even um say like nicholas wending refin it those films, his films, feel like a, a workman's film, right? Like someone that fucking, he's worked hard to make this movie happen. And her films just don't feel, really feel like that. I can't I think, agree. I think, I think I don't you I think I've seen any of them it. other than None of them? Lost in Translation. That's it. Somewhere was pretty good. That was maybe the, the really like, I mean, I actually enjoyed Lost. I was out to dislike Lost in Translation. And I waited a long time to watch it. And I watched it. I was like, oh, this is all right. This is not it's bad fine. Yeah. there's nothing to be mad at here uh but i watched the bling ring and i was not a fan of that somewhere i thought it was pretty good minimalist filmmaking the bling, the bling ring that's a documentary right no 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 that hat yeah. that was a th it, there might be a documentary with the same name because it was based oh, yeah, on yeah, real no, events I, yeah, yeah i saw no i saw it i saw it it sucks 
Yeah. They were doing that thing that Netflix is doing now with uh, uh, the Marilyn Monroe thing. So they put out a movie and now they're putting out a documentary about like her tapes or whatever. Because I guess people didn't react positively to that movie that we really liked. Did you see that, Jerry? What is that movie called? Jerry, uh, I thought you were raising up a dead cat by the yeah, tail yeah, for a second. Cat I killed. No, I thought, I thought you were raising a loaf of bread. <laughs> so why do you have bread? Because it's like white grain. <laughs> <laughs> just did you see that uh that Marilyn Monroe movie? No, I hella wanted to though because I heard it's like good. It's great. It, you, I think you would enjoy it. Um, it felt very Twin Peaks. Yeah, it's very well, peculiar. That's I've said before. Like Marilyn Monroe wasn't talented for shit. I think all of her films are basically completely passable. You would never need to see them. If I was like, hey name a thousand films right now and you didn't name a Marilyn Monroe you didn't say the misfits or whatever like I I wouldn't I wouldn't be pissed right well, you could just, some like it hot wouldn't be on your it. list <laughs> that's the only but, one I can think of yeah she's very she, Pamela Anderson ish right where, he's, where she's like oh she's trying oh she's mm -hmm. trying that's that's cute Aww. but yeah exactly or it's, uh, you know think I Honestly, thankfully, she existed because, you know, creeps like Glenn Danzig wouldn't have been all horny for her dead body and, and made the music that he made or whatever. But like, I don't I don't know that people really give a fuck. Honestly, I think they just like to jack off in their brain to like the pictures they see of her whenever they go to the gas station. Oh, they do now. After that movie, uh, something that I never expected to happen is that all of this um uh, what would you homely people came out of the woodwork to defend her honor and how she was you know she was very tormented and she was a hero of many plus size people because i mean it's, all, it's the first... always the same crowd of uh like 33 year old dumpy single yeah. journalists right it's always that type of individual who comes out and says well actually no let's yeah. make a correction here uh, but the movie doesn't really seem caught up in facts, and it's based off of a fictional biography by Joyce Carol Oates. Like, just that being the basis of it should have given the whole thing a pass, but it doesn't matter. Obviously, it doesn't matter, and it's kind of foolish to even concern yourself with these, these you know, gripes and grievances. Well, the, the, the biggest gripe I also see is that the, the baby and that, that uh, the there's a... The baby. There's a scene. There's like a not the rapper. The baby. There's a there's a, there's an abortion scene where you see a little baby and the baby like I don't know if it speaks or like so, so, says something says, or whatever. Hell, and little, and it reaches through the like, screen in it's 3D. All dodging <laughs> the fucking yeah. blades, getting sucked by the vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, how that's so uh, fucking irresponsible or whatever. And it's just like it's it was a lot director. like in Scrooge when the ghost of Christmas future unveils his robe and you see the little hands in the face. Also, little fucking. You know. It's yeah. very Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I like that bit because it reminds me of a. Uh uh beetlejuice whenever beetlejuice is like hey you want to see something gross and they're like mm -hmm. okay and then he just fucking <coughs> puts his dick out he's got warm his, his dick. jacket but they yeah. show you from behind and they're all like all fucked up from it and he's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great it's just his penis just his penis um just like, I love, there was a lot of uh little little i don't know if it, they were like inside jokes maybe not inside jokes because it was the 80s but something that made me laugh out loud was that um Richard Pryor joke that's oh, in yeah. this movie. Yeah, yeah. Where someone's on fire and he's like, What are you like something related to Richard Pryor? Because he has that bit where he <laughs> yeah. set himself on fire. He's imagining he was... the waiter engulfing in flames because yeah. he's setting a baked Alaska and he's seeing the guy uh flame on. And uh yeah, it, a lot of a lot of this movie just felt like Bill Murray improvising. Yeah. Just Bill Murray was... whipping out lines left and right, ignoring the script. And that's really, I think, what makes it charming and, and good and funny still. Yeah. That Zulu Nation line, too, that also that was really funny. I don't know. I, I, I feel like I, I've never seen this before. And I was able to connect with so many things. I was just like, what? why? Like, it's been like, I think I own that on DVD and I just never saw it. Uh, but it's one of those one of those movies where like it just takes you back to like, it's like an innocence, I guess, that is very difficult to feel with modern movies that this type of movie makes me feel like it just takes me back to just being a little boy sitting in front of the TV and like nothing matters other than that what's happening on the screen. But then there were so many little 
like jokes with the Bobcat character too. He just goes crazy and has a shotgun and he's just threatening him <laughs> with a shotgun. Uh, the, his whole character was great. And I, I love Bobcat on everything that I've seen so far uh, because he's just such an odd, such an 80s character too, where it's like his voice, the way he looks uh, and the way he acts. And in this world that is set up in this movie, he's just like a perfect character uh, in this. And I just, yeah, every time he's on, Maybe I just need to see more movies where he pops up uh, in the 80s. Cause he's we got great. skinny Bobcat with this movie, too. Yeah. That's a rare Bobcat. Usually yeah. you get the Police Academy, uh, wide Bill Murray hairline style Bobcat. Yeah. But no, he's dweeby and small and meekish in this Little. film. Yeah, I think he probably tiny. had the most money ever at that point in his entire career so he could afford enough cocaine to look good on camera. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love I love that scene. Like when you talk about improving, Laura's, uh, I'm I'm for sure certain that that Bobcat probably had a a series of lines, uh, maybe a couple of things. This is like what you have to say during a shotgun rampage or whatever, uh, pepper in some of these, and they were just like, "Bill, Bobcat's gonna come in with a shotgun, okay? Yeah, all right." <laughs> I'm like, that's basically <laughs> that's basically how it went. Like, this pleading with him is so it just seems like the type of pleading you would be doing in that situation as that character right it's very it's a very like a uh, white it's a very white collar rich guy way to try to get someone to not kill you and it's fucking hilarious that's the that's the thing about that character is that even though he like technically uh you know embraces christmas or like gets better or whatever like that he still comes off as like a just a genuine regular white collar asshole it's not like he got his assistant a new fucking house like not underneath yeah. the fucking train tracks and in, in brooklyn or whatever they gave her some extra fucking christmas presents a bonus and like a day off or whatever and her kid can talk that's it yeah that's, that's it that's it's it. like well your kid talks now so you're you're welcome merry christmas that's uh you know that's, that, that's, did. that's uh, an aspect to this movie i never realized when i was a young boy watching this is nothing really gets resolved at the end he just <laughs> takes over the television television station for a night ruins and clearly gets special. himself fired yes the this yeah. the actors they're out of the job <laughs> the whole network is in fucking shambles he's probably fired but he's got a girlfriend so why don't he you know, he can just ruin everybody's life for for a night on christmas mhm mm just a selfish asshole <laughs> well it's like uh go ahead isn't it messed up that because of political uh, correctness uh you don't really get midgets anymore like I, at the beginning, I was like, "Holy shit!" There's midgets being little Christmas elves, and midgets you don't see, little. and you don't see that anymore because of you know it's offensive to cast them as that. But I feel like, you know, they had jobs, and that's a positive thing, right? <laughs> so that now they yeah. don't get those jobs, so that you know that's that Peter sucks. Dinklage's fault. He I opened his say, big fucking mouth. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm pretty sure one of the top like 50 highest paid actors in the world right now is Peter Dinklage. So I'm Just pretty him. sure one. Well, all I mean, right, so he he took over the entire midget market, and it's just like, one of like them the, now. That's like the dude I can name, right? But that's more midgets that you can name in film than you could name then. I'm for sure certain there are more well, there's, little people in film now uh, than then. Just fewer. Well, Warwick props. Davis. Warwick yeah, Davis, Warwick right? Davis. Yeah, there you go. And then and then you have the black one that was on comedy movies in the early two thousands. I don't know his name, but the guy from Me, Myself, mm -hmm. and Irene, and yeah, uh, uh, Bad, Bad Santa. Santa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you yeah, don't even yeah, know his yeah. name. See, that's fucked up, Jerry. Well, don't even know his so, name. But you know his name <laughs> right. either, bitch. No, but I'm no. What I'm saying is that there are probably more working little people now than there were then with actual roles because of people like Peter Dinklage, as opposed to being used as props, like when a guy just runs out of the room and he's being chased by fifty other people in the first Jackass fucking, you know, like how about, it's a little different. How about Wolf of Wall Street, where there's a midget in just the first five minutes being swung around because they're a midget. <laughs> just literally, just a literal prop. <laughs> right. And then just what wrestlers, right? Yep. There's some Mexico and uh yeah, yep. I don't know. It was refreshing. Lee Majors still alive. <laughs> that was really cool. That intro was awesome. That that the the beginning of the movie is such a great setup for everything. Just like the whole 
uh, th the whole meeting uh, about him just wanting like sex and and action and ex explosions with something that has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then that intro of like you know this typical Christmas movie with like great miniatures too. That that was also great right at the beginning. It's like oh it's there's uh snow in town is just miniatures and then you see all the little elves and then they have machine guns and it becomes a completely different thing uh it, it was a really good setup for what was coming and it, it took what a couple of minutes and and you already know the type of movie that you were in for yeah and what's what's funny like kind of about that from from the filmmaker's perspective is like that's also sort of a wink and a nod to you the viewer where you know that the the theme of the film is supposed to be, hey, that's bad, right? And we want somebody to do happy-go-lucky Christmas movie. But we also didn't make happy-go-lucky Christmas movie. We made, effectively, that trailer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that trailer you're watching with, like, the shotgun yeah. guy and, like, the baby that blows up and shit like that. And it's, like, too hot for Christmas or whatever the fuck. That's basically the movie they made. But the movie is also saying, don't watch that movie. Right. It's a great bit of meta. It's a great bit of meta for 1988 comedy Christmas film. So I have a I have a bit of information on this movie that I actually obtained from another podcast. I'm guilty of that here. So go listen to Wrong Reel. But I thought this was interesting. And I had talked to David Johansson, Buster Poindexter, who plays the ghost of Christmas past in this film, very briefly, because I was trying to obtain one of his songs that he was uh, uh, contributed to the Fear City soundtrack, which is the song New York Doll, mm -hmm. which was written by Joe D'Elia and uh, is named after his own band, the New York Dolls. And I said to him, hey, could I get that song New York Doll? He said, what is New York Doll? <laughs> and then his wife took over the conversation. So that was my correspondence with David Johansson, Buster Poindexter. But here's what I learned. The, I guess the drummer or a, like a co-singer or, or something with the New York Dolls decide, who had terrible, terrible bad blood with David Johansson, hated David Johansson. Something bad happened between them. They stopped talking. He tunes into HBO one night. He's like, I like Bill Murray. I'll watch Scrooge tonight. And he watches Scrooge, and as luck would have it, his worst enemy pops up as the ghost of Christmas past. And in that moment, he suffers such a mental breakdown, seeing David Johansson as the ghost of Christmas past, that he says, hey, wife, could you come over here real quick? And his wife comes over there, and he fucking punches her right in the face. And then he jumps out the window and breaks all of his bones because he lived on, like, the sixth floor or something. So that's what happened. And then he became what? a Mormon. Hold on, but how did how did he even how did he even know that that was hit Dave that how did he even know that was David Johansson in the costume? The costume's a big skull face and a big thing. No, 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 no. The cabbie. No, 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 the no, cabbie. No, cab oh, the cabbie. Pass. Oh, yeah. the cabbie. The cabbie. Yes. The cabbie. Yes, 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 yes. There and right, he right. chews so much scenery in this movie and and He's great. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a good, awesome. Good chunk of the movie. Yes, this, this is probably his best role. You know, and he hasn't done a whole lot of cyber. He was on Oz, where he was like getting. Actually, no, he was like a Jewish accountant that all like the the Aryan gang and the black gang worked between to like handle certain disputes, and then he gets killed or something. He gets fucking shanked in the library. Yeah, it's oh, so Oz. Even get... Every character gets killed. Yep, every character gets killed and raped and then killed again. <laughs> uh yeah so uh, another another like weird movie bit that i don't know is true uh but it's something that i've had as a conspiracy theory for a long time is that the film halloween town was trying to ape on the same concept with their ta the bones taxi driver or whatever the skeleton taxi driver that they have who's supposed to be quick-witted and and also a little grimy but uh pg grimy or whatever i i think that they just took that same character and applied it to that did a very poor a very poor job of it although an extremely popular film for some people mm -hmm. but i i i see like a one-to-one -one comparison between the two nearly yeah I, this, halloween town was yeah. one i never understood why like this took with kids and they they this is almost getting like the same treatment as not quite but close uh hocus pocus as far as like reverence goes with millennials and this was just kind yeah. of like a standard disney channel movie you know, it's that it's that shit where it was like uh it was like on right yeah so hold on hans 
Hans, can you go back to the Halloween Town banner? I will send you an extra five dollars on your PayPal for the month the if you make this your Twitter banner for the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll All right. Sorry, right Jerry. Continue. I don't remember. Oh, I think it's. I think it's. It was just on for a lot of people. Uh, you know, when they're like fucking ten and eleven and twelve, and so you and your like sister are carving a pumpkin, and your mom puts on the Disney Channel and it's Halloween Town, and then so like four or five years of that, and it's very important to you, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just that. And then fast forward to now, you have a kid, and you're like, oh, well, my kid's also like hocus pocus. Look how cool it is, kids. <laughs> How much How much longer do you think before they decide to reboot this? You know what I just saw? I saw that they remade the movie Snow Day, the Nickelodeon movie with Chris Elliott, and I think Josh Peck was in it, which was supposed to be a Pete and Pete movie at first. And then uh, I guess Pete and Pete just looked too old and awkward because they were that late into adolescence. So they were like, we'll just make it generic characters and feature some of the same actors. With the Ch- Chevy Chase? Yes, Chevy Chase was the dad, and he was the weatherman in that movie. Holy shit. This is direct to Paramount+. Plus. Hans, you want to pull up? Uh, you know what? We've gotten flagged the last few, so if you want to play it on mute or something, just be very careful. What is it? Snow Sorry, Day 2022. I was, 2022. My, I was working on my banner. Um, oh. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, Wonderful. Day. I like how I was just we we were criticizing people for doing cameos, and you agreed to that for five dollars. Five five bucks is all it took to change it for his <laughs> fucking multi, his multimedia professional profile. Listen, that's one hour of my job, so that's uh, means more to me. Oh, I have I found a Spanish trailer for wait Snow, Snow Day twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty two. Oh, 2020. Okay. Uh, Is there a 2021 that's in Spanish? It's not. It's not a movie. I don't think. Oh wow. Mm. That... It's just uh, someone's home movie. Or yeah, or not I think so. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's Hold a on. news right. broadcast. Mm-hmm. Do we got it? There's literally no one in this movie. They got Jerry Trainer, who was on what Zoe 101 and all those Nick shows. Sound off. Make sure the sounds off. Please, sound off. It's off. It's on. Just there goes just, there goes that. We just hear it. It's too it late is, now. It's total okay. Oh, I'm I'm just getting word. Hold From on. Fiverr.com. Ah, <laughs> dropping. Oof. Oh, this song's a fucking banger. I'm sorry, racially ambiguous girl. I didn't mean to spill ice cream on you. I'm sorry, black girl. That's not really that black. Otherwise, it won't be approved by our producers. Right. Snow in the hole. That's inappropriate. Snow in the hole is whenever you put cocaine in a straw, you lube up one end of it. And this happened on the set of Scrooge. <laughs> oh, I hate the puns. Uh, this is really bad. I mean, when you remake a movie, and like, not that long ago it came out. It was 20 years, you know. Aren't you supposed to like, at least try to improve everything? I feel, it, it, it's a, or at least like visually improve it. This looks worse. It sounds worse. There's nothing about it that seems similar to that original Snow Day movie. Um, the only other thing I can think like this is the Terror Train remake that went to Tubi, which looks so cheap also. Is this the original? Yeah. The top one, the top one. Do the top one. No, the that's top one was the same. That's, that's the nope, 2020. it wasn't. It was. It, it, it's oh. not. Oh, you're, you're right. Yeah, so just like... Just the yeah. visuals of the first 10 seconds look already much better than whatever the other thing was. It looks like an actual, like a movie, you know? Are 
the nineties hot girl in a half shirt. I love that. Yeah. On a day when anything can happen. Hi, Hal. Hey, look out. Everything will. Principal Weaver. Yes. I remember that guy. He wasn't things. He was on Pete and Pete. That was it. Oh, was that it? I don't think he did anything else. This really fat Josh Peck. <laughs> oh, Chris Elliott. <laughs> He's like trying to kill them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try something new. Me. It's a snow day, Claire. Anything can happen. I, Rest I in peace, I Chris Elliott. This film too. I saw this in theaters. Oh. He's on like a. Uh, um fuck what's that show with uh eugene levy they like just ended uh the one he did oh. with his son dan levy yeah shit's creek yeah shit's yeah. creek chris elliott was like uh the number i think he would have been in the number three on that one he plays like the mayor he's in like every like single kathleen, episode like kathleen o'hara i think it's yeah yeah mm -hmm. she reprises her role as the mom from Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. So by comparison, when Bill Murray was doing the Wes Anderson films, this is what his rival Chevy Chase was up to. Yep. <laughs> As he yep. ventured into family films. It was Vegas Vacation in 97 or so, and then he did this movie, and then he disappeared. You know, I did not hate Vegas Vacation. I, I remember actually really liking it when I was younger. I don't know that it would stand up now, but I, I did not hate it. I think it's a little cheesy, but it's fine. You know, it's a it's a PG family comedy with like a good comedic actor, you know, and you can't really go wrong with any of the vacation films. Maybe that remake. Actually, you know what? Cousin Eddie's Christmas Vacation 2 is really fucking bad. Hans, you want to look up the trailer to that? That was an NBC movie of the week in 2003. Christmas Vacation 2, Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. I hated oh, yeah. that movie. Laura is so fucking mad right now. That fucking, I was, he just I was excited about it when I was 12. I was like, what? Christmas <laughs> Vacation 2? With Co I love Cousin Eddie. Eddie, the star? <laughs> oh, I gotta see this. And it was really, really rough going. That was before Randy Quaid became persona not watched by anyone, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, like eight years later, that's he... when he would do the, uh, what was it, Rupert Murdoch sex video or something, trying to get blacklisted by Fox and then went on the Yeah, he, he printed uh, a picture of him and like put it on his face and then had sex with his wife or something on what? I think it was something like that. <laughs> he, <he's great. laughs> I can't wait for him to get signed to Daily Wire. There's... Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Look at the only trailer I was able to find has a power thing. director. Holy yeah. shit. Power director. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What's your dad do? Uh, um... That's Lizzie McGuire's brother. It's not Roy we're letting go, Eddie. It's... I don't think that's the original music, is it? Uh, I mean, what, what has he got that I ain't got? His brainwaves register more distinctly than yours. Is that it's hold on? Did someone like throw trailer. that music on top of it? What is? Yeah, it why is the music sound. louder than the dialogue? <laughs> hold on. This is the, the closest thing to a trailer that I could find. <laughs> it's it's really like a, not a trailer. Let me see. I'll, a, I'll see if I can find one real quick and send it to you. There's a Joe Blow original, like 20 minute. Uh, no, no, no. Review, We're not playing but... someone else's content. Talking about this movie that only they and myself remember. <laughs> um, Apple TV. Christmas Vacation. Maybe it'll, it'll be on like another website. Christmas Vacation. It's on Voodoo. Too. <laughs> the full movie. Uh, oh, I think I found it. Hold on. National Lampoon. The death of National Lampoon. National Lampoon put their name on Christmas yeah, Vacation 2, but not Vegas Vacation. That's remarkable. Okay. Yeah, this looks like the same My clip. Dad's a brain surgeon. What's your dad do? Um, he works in nuclear research. Nuclear scientist? Well, not exactly. Mm. Yeah, please. Audrey. Hi. Okay. Merry 
Christmas. You know what? I think we're good. Yeah, it's not a trailer either. No, this is not. Right? This is not a trailer at all. Video upload by Ted says. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Kill myself. Where is the island? They get stranded. See, Survivor was popular during this time, and they were like, you know, it'd be great if we had Eddie. Because they, they also did like a bunch of, you know, Castaway came out. It was Lost was just premiering. Uh, it was a big, hey, being stranded on an island is cool kind of time period. And they decided, hey, we'll send Cousin Eddie to the island. And it sucked. They got the original girl back from uh, the original vacation film and Eric Idle from Monty Python for this movie. Oh, damn. He's like the biggest star in that movie. Yeah, there's not even a trailer. I guess it's mm -hmm. been blacklisted. It's just you're the only one that remembers this movie. I'm the only one. You know, there's also, I don't know if this is official. We were talking about Porky's in our group chat the other day, and I realized that Porky's 4, Zap, is not it, like an official Porky's film. It was called Hollywood Zap here. And similar to the vacation movies, there's a movie called Thanksgiving Vacation with Brian Cranston and Judge Reinhold that National Lampoon put out. You want to take a look at this? And I don't think... Thanksgiving Vacation? I think it had an original title that was unrelated to the, uh, to the Vacation series. And then they dubbed it that because National Lampoon needed money. And hey, what's a quick way to make money? We'll make it a vacation film. Did Thanksgiving Family Reunion? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Check out IMDb. Yeah. Am I misremembering? Am I spreading lies on this podcast? I swear I saw it as Thanksgiving Vacation. I don't. Why don't you just pull up a quick pull clip up. or something? With Josh so Reinhold. Hmm. It would be under alternate titles. This trip is very important to your father, no matter how much it may inconvenience the rest of us. Coming soon to DVD and video. I'm looking for Woodrow Snyder. You found him, man. From National. Brian Cranston. <laughs> Judge Reinhold. Jill. Ah, what are you doing? Hey, look, just. I'm just soaping you up, man. Malcolm in the Middle's Brian Cranston in National Lampoon's Holiday Reunion. Available November 16th. Be thankful it's only once a year. Yeah. That, is, that, <laughs> is that it? This is it, yes. I wasn't even enough to sell the film. <laughs> that, that trailer was so shit. We let them do that. <laughs> uh, Penelope the Ann Miller. Nice uh, it would be down the bottom. I think it would be under like trivia or something. Alternate right, titles. The alternate uh, details. Also note, maybe I just, I don't know. Maybe I got a bootleg copy or something. But I swear this was Thanksgiving vacation at one point. Thanksgiving family reunion. Ho holiday reunion. You know what? Maybe it's the Berenstein Bears effect <laughs> yeah. or something. I don't know. Maybe I just, I'm having a false memory right now. Anyway, screw well, National Lampoon good. is dead, right? No, it's still around. It, it's a, it, you know, it's, it exists. I don't know if they're doing anything. They got into the business of putting out really shitty American Pie style sequels for a period of time. Like, I think they did a movie with Steve-O called TV the Movie or something. I don't know. They did a bunch of, like, very cheap $12,000 films starring washed-up celebrities and put those out on DVD in the late aughts. Yeah, the last one I can see here in the Wikipedia is one called uh, Drunk Stone Brilliant Dead. It's a documentary about the magazine. And... Uh... There's a surf party in 2013. Uh, there was a movie that was an adaptation of, what was it? Uh, there was some biography or something. And it, I believe it started Will Forte is the guy who founded National Lampoon. And it was called, it was called something. I don't know. It was directed to Netflix and it was not that bad. Okay, so here's oh, the yeah. list of really awful Direct. Oh yeah, they got a second win because of Van Wilder. I forgot about that. Red that was pressure. their only other actual hit, and of course they had to do it with Van Wilder: The Rise of Taj. <laughs> yeah, because that's right. what everyone wants. Everyone loved that character. 
they could not this? get Ryan Reynolds to even do a cameo. Holy oh my shit, god, they got bad. Pedro from from uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. <laughs> he was okay. he was probably dying for work. <laughs> and then there's this. You guys remember this? Oh, there's the guy. There's that guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you were just talking about him. Tony, is that T- Tony Cox? Is that his name? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel I like there was a white a... midget that looked exactly like that guy who was in a Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen Halloween movie. Or to like Very to true. grandmother's house we go. And he had long hair. And I always, for whatever reason, as a boy, confused this black midget with that white guy midget. I don't think he was in this one. I think he was in the Halloween one. And I don't know the the title of this. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think it was Mary Kate and Ashley uh, Spooky Halloween or something. I don't know. Let's see. Halloween double, movie trailer. Oh yes, double. double double toil and trouble. There you go, Phil Fond Fondaraco Caro, Fondaraco. He's an Italian, so Fondaracaro. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, re- I recognize him. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he looks exactly like him, but but uh, he's no, I mean, that, a... that shot you, you can get a mix. It's up not the worst easy. comparison to make. Um, yeah. So there you go. He should have played young Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is it, all Italian hands look like that. It doesn't matter if they're rigid or not. <laughs> Just rich boss hands. Yeah, he's uh, he looks he looks. I don't I don't want to say regular, but if you don't see his hands, it's like, oh, it's just a regular, regular no, you're right. fella. Hey, click on that clown photo of him. Which clown photo? Yeah, he could do well on like a dating website. There's a clown photo literally right next to the picture. Right there. With that cute hat with the flower on it. What? Where he looks like a clown, oh. Hans. This is from... There's uh... like three... Yeah. They... That's kind of creepy looking. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's real spooky. All right, we got to get out of this. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. Him. What's wrong with that? Yeah. I think they always framed it John Podesta's house. It's uh, um, Phil Fonda Caro. Uh, what is he up to now? Is he alive? I was about to ask you. Do you think he's alive still? Do they live long? Uh, he's the last movie he did was The Haunted Dollhouse, um, which is uh, you know one of those movies that look like uh, the cover looks like a Fiverr cover, Full Moon. Production. Oh, a diabolical anthology. C- Charles he, Band, Full Moon. Yep. It is Full Moon. Yeah, he was in Evil Bong. He played a character called Chihuahua in Land of the Dead. I don't remember that. No, me either. <laughs> I hope it just shows you dog. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes. What do you think okay. he's going to show the Beverly Hills Chihuahua? But he hasn't acted in. What nine years? He's dead. Yeah, right? no, just Google, just Google his name, right? Don't just. I mean, yeah, it's, he might not have worked in fucking like, twenty years or ten years or whatever, but he might also just be alive. He could oh, be. Yeah, he he could be in a home. Yeah. How old? What? How old is he? In normal years or in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess he's alive and doing digital events or something. 2019, 2020, So I just. I guess yeah. he doesn't want to work. He's collecting yeah. benefits, chilling. And he's like, I, I don't want to play the troll again. He's like, I'm looking tall here. Uh, Jesus. Do you think they tag teamed her? That's his wife. Oh. Like Vern Troyer tag teamed anything? <laughs> that looks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't want to continue pulling. All right, that's enough of him. Maybe we'll have him on the show next week. He's got nothing. We make fun of Italians all the time. Who cares? He was he was troll from troll. He played. He was the the troll. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Let's see. I just made the joke. I don't want to be the troll again. I just said that. Did you guys? uh, He also plays a tiny vampire on something. I don't know what it is, but he looks like Dracula. Lil Dracula, L I L. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's. 
the most anyone's ever talked about this man. Uh, <laughs> Especially doing a podcast about Scrooge. Yes, yeah, so Scrooge. <laughs> um, there's no midgets in Scrooge. Why'd you bring this guy up, Hans? Yes, there is. The first, what, Oh, two that minutes? one midget. Damn, we started there and we got to Phil. That's unbelievable. Fun to carry. It was just like a... Yes, there was... <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of legwork right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Another moment in Scrooge that scared the hell out of me as a kid is when he winds up down in the sewer... And he finds the frozen homeless guy. Oh, that yeah. was, was oh geez, that was jarring for my five year old little brain. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Who would uh, have known he, that you would move to New York as an adult and then just deal with them daily? Yep. <laughs> I mean, you, yep. Could, you could find your very own frozen homeless man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh like and as an adult, um it's a very interesting way to do that, right? You could very easily have your character, you know, he meets the homeless people. He, you know, goes through his arc or whatever as he's finishing up his Ghosts of Christmas Future arc. He's about to, you know, change his stripes or whatever. He could come across his friend Chip or whatever his name was, like 80% frozen, like on the brink of dying. And by saving him, right, that's the thing that really pushes him. And he, that's the thing, like, oh, my God, that felt good to help somebody. <gasps> if I could help this person, I could help anybody. Christmas, right? That's like really easy to do. But instead, they show him dead, frozen, dead, smiling, staring off into nothing. And and instead of being like, oh man, I could have saved him, Bill Murray says, you could have gone back to the shelter. He blames him. <laughs> he blames him. It's your own fault. You fucking died here. <laughs> There's very minimal character growth in this movie, which is something that I do appreciate. He only just learns, like, hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't have wasted that relationship, but everything else yeah. is right about me. I don't need to, you know, I don't need <laughs> I don't to adjust. Need shit else. I got a good assistant. Mm -hmm. I don't need to like pay attention to what my, what my brother likes. Maybe I'll hang out with him a little bit more, but she does a good job, my assistant, at the things she does. So now that her, her son's not retarded anymore, she can get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never seen a, a very successful man uh, just leaving or dropping everything for like a four uh just because she was like the only one that would like put up with his shit i guess uh what karen you think karen allen's, allen's a, four? a four yeah okay what? i was waiting for you to say something jerry yeah i don't think karen <laughs> allen's a four especially for like... in this movie she looks like on wash the whole movie she's like she just woke she works up. at a He's homeless like... shelter well, you she, can, she could she shower. Looks, trying to fit in. <laughs> she looks like yeah. she looks like a little bit better looking than Adrian in Rocky. Mm -hmm. They almost have Which the exact same three. outfit too. Right? No, <laughs> she's fine. It's, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that for the vast majority of the film, right, her mm -hmm. clothing, her outfit, the way she looks, like aesthetically, yeah. is the same type of outfit as what adrian would wear mm -hmm. yeah no, very frumpy no, very karen, like whatever very like am i homeless like, too type of frumpy is the <laughs> way to describe <laughs> clothes no but overall she's she's pretty hot yeah she's like a cute eight like a nice girl 80s nice girl. actress you know she's not like a yeah. babe like farrah fawcett or something you know no, I like think the she's party. raiders what about like the, right she's not like the one that's taking like photocopies of her ass on the christmas party and she's just giving them to people as a christmas present <laughs> no nah, dude, nah, dude. I, was, I was like in... hold on i thought this was a christmas movie you can see the outline of her vagina in those, in those <laughs> coffee. what the fuck yeah in raiders she was smoking hot in raiders dude yeah yeah i, I don't yeah. know familiar you I'm, I'm ne you've never I'm saw never familiar raiders of the lost ark i've never seen indiana jones movie no oh that's another one to get done after we get through these christmas movies I still have to come up with the, the Columbo master list for... So here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out a day where the three of us are all good to go. And my apologies that we haven't had an episode in a while because I've been so concerned with sh like editing and shooting um, for Mass State Lottery to try and package this up and get it out there. Um, we're going to do a Columbo movie stream. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Columbo episodes were released as films in Europe, so in Poland, in England, in Italy, I believe, maybe. Uh, there were about like five or six of these Columbo episodes, usually with like a higher profile guest. 
that were released as films. I have a poster on my wall in my hallway of one called A Friend Indeed, which was directed by Ben Gazzara. And uh, I don't know who the killer in that is I, off the top of my head, but that was that's that's probably on the list. I think the John Cassavetes one, uh, Etude in Black, is also another one that was released as a film. And then maybe even the, the first one. Uh, Columbo was on the air for like 30, 40, 50 years. Never once had a Christmas episode. So are we going to watch the Polish version where it's just a Russian guy doing everyone's voices? Have you guys seen that? <laughs> it's it's just that guy with like a zero. Uh, I would love like, to hear a Russian just... guy's Peter Falk impression. <laughs> well, they don't. Have you ever seen the dubbing that they do where it's just it's just a guy that just talks like this throughout the whole thing? Like there's no anything. It's yeah, just he just he's like narrating the thing. Like there's no. a there's like a weird reason for that. Some there's a weird reason for that where it basically ended up being one voiceover guy for like 15 different fucking companies so a movie would come through and he would do the entire movie yeah. he would have a transcript and he would just read through the movie and it would just be it would just be him saying what's it's new like, on prime every coming to hollywood video in march there's like five highest girl, just these are different people there's female dialogue and it's just like cross kick cross kick cross kick cross 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 Mm -hmm. That's what I was I was telling Laura is that I should just do the Spanish dubbing and it's just me doing everyone's voice in Spanish. Yeah, really yeah, pretty good. I don't I know if it's a bad Laura. idea at all. I think we lost Laura. Um, we might have lost unless he's just he keeping oh. that pose. Like, I'm, so, I'm yeah. sorry, I just got a warning a from Zoom time. that my connection is unstable. Uh -oh. Do you guys? Uh -oh. He's the one recording we good? this, so we might not even be yeah. getting this. Uh -oh. This this might not be on air right now. Say the n word. No, oh, this man. isn't great. It's not, be gonna be on, it's not going to be on air, Hans. I promise. Oh, I will not be tricked. I've been tricked before. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh, are we good? Oh, oh, damn. Uh. uh oh. Okay. So my internet just crapped out here, and I came back, and wouldn't you know it? My old pals Hans and Jerry were watching the Armageddon commentary track by Ben Affleck, a great film in the Criterion Collection. What prompted this, and why? Why was that on the screen? Well, I, because we were we were talking about that Russian guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I I told Jerry that I remember telling you that I should just do the dubbing in Spanish for Mass State Lottery, and it's just me doing every voice. And then he mentioned. I'm sorry, Hans, that, you didn't raise your Duncan cup up as Jerry and I were sipping our Duncan coffee. Yeah, what the fuck, have, man? We don't have Duncan here. And we have coffee, but I, I'm not drinking coffee at 9 p.m. Oh, you let animal. us down. You dropped the ball in the moment, Hans. Anyway, so he said, have you ever heard the Armageddon commentary where Ben Affleck is just drunk? And I had not. Uh, and uh, it's it's funny. So um, what I'm thinking now is that uh, when Mass State Lottery comes out and everyone's seen it, I think we should record commentary for it when the three of us is just completely the civic wasted. tv commentary wasted just yeah. Yeah. just cooked just just drunk the three of us just very <laughs> drunk and just you know letting it out just like ben affleck did it is oh home. yeah there's That's... gonna be like 12 commentary tracks that will be one we should get what is it cacique what the fuck were we drinking that yeah, first cacique. time around let's, let's get some water yep. yeah just a couple of that, big bottles we drink and... that both times you know, nothing. I don't. I have not had liquor keep me warm like that does. <laughs> yeah, I would not have died. Nothing I would not have you died up. in the sewer like that homeless dude if I had a <laughs> bottle of Casique down there. You know, some something that I've been thinking about doing. I said this during um, my little production. So on patreoncom slash Laura's in the five dollar tier, I started a little show for when Hans is busy or just doesn't work out with scheduling called the Production Diary of MSL. And it's just me revealing a bunch of MSL secrets. And I said something that I would like to do at some point, and this was actually before I rewatched Scrooge, uh, is do like a, I want, kind of want to do like a 50 minute Christmas carol with our gang and see if that could be something that's done with like sets and whatnot. So that might be, that might be in the what works. Do, what do you mean? 
Christmas Carol. Like we just. What do you mean? What do I mean? A Christmas what? Carol? The a Christmas famous yeah. Charles Carol. Dickens book. It's the, <laughs> it's the basis no, of but... Scrooge. He does, does well, a Christmas no, 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 Carol. I, about it. No, I know, I know. But <laughs> like, what do you mean a Christmas? Ca- what do you mean Christmas? What, what, what do you? What is? So, so we Christmas. just go back to we we'll go back to places where we shot and just like oh remember that no. homeless guy I never we said any of that the no past, we stay in the present and then we go okay. into the future I still don't know what you guys mean a Christmas Carol <laughs> right time travel yeah. okay. oh you're talking about I was getting into time travel I'm like fuck it we gotta figure that shit out dude I'm a couple <laughs> joints deep so. um. I don't, My state so, lottery too is in the Wild West. Is that what you're? That's <laughs> Back to the Future. That's the worst All Back right, to the Future. Right. There's something about them boys. Seeing of them, <laughs> they wants to be murdered. A gay killer in the Wild West. What do you mean gay? <laughs> what does that mean? Yes. Instead of dumping their bodies in the ocean, he's dumping them in sand. Everybody's got their kinks. Mine. They can tell you them. That's wonderful. Wonderful Wild West Jerry is my favorite Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to shave like your goatee and you just have a handlebar. Mm-hmm. Just, no, that's dude, your character. Yeah. When I get my goatee, whenever I get it trimmed or whatever, uh, my barber, he doesn't need to know that now. But I used to tell him, like, just get me with a custard. And that's, he knows that, that means like just point it, you know, make it like pointy. General custard, not because you custard. love custard. No, no. He just, Rubs custard on my beard, <laughs> and I give him forty dollars. He feeds it. He spoons it into your mouth like a baby. <laughs> so I got hairs on it. Shit, here you go, kid. <laughs> Fifty bucks. <clears throat> Scrooge. Scrooge. Scrooge is a great movie. Um, I yeah. do recommend Scrooge. Where does this fall, uh, Hans, for you? <clears throat> where does Scrooge fall in the Bill Murray 80s canon, we'll say? Oof, definitely at the top. Uh, I love Ghostbusters. Yeah, over like, Ghostbusters? No, no, no. Not, I mean, top Over Ghostbusters 2? Uh, yes, yeah. I love Ghostbusters. That's one of my favorite movies of all time, but... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the second one. Uh, Why? A lot of people hate Ghostbusters too, and I kind of don't understand that. I don't hate it. I just don't think that it works as well. It doesn't have like the same. I feel like the chemistry between the characters is not as solid as it is on the first one. Do you it think that's because like... Ernie Hudson shaved his mustache? <laughs> oh, no. Maybe. No? I don't know. I feel like uh, the the chemistry what? between the characters is not as, as, as solid I'll as I'll tell the you first what, one. when I was a boy, I was like, this is a different guy. This is, a different this is guy. not Ernie Hudson. Why would they get a new that. Ghostbuster? I don't get it. This is yeah. Bill Cosby. <laughs> this is uh, Dr. Huxtable. Yeah. yeah. That was Ghost Dad. No, oh, should that. we do Ghost Dad? Ghost Dad, the Bill Cosby movie. Is that a Christmas yeah. movie? Is that yeah, another no. I, Christmas? The thing about The thing about Ghostbusters 2 is like. Uh, it wants to do the same kind of beats as Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster, Ghostbusters. Excuse me. Is that, Ghostbuster. It's, like how your, it's like how your mom refers to a, a movie. Did Nintendo? you go watch the Ghostbuster? <laughs> oh, you want to play the Nintendo? Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just it tries to hit the same beats, uh, and it's like not nearly as charming when it does, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's not the library ghost feeling where you're first yeah. experiencing that like over the top fucking supernatural shit. You're like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. immediately, it doesn't have the uh, the kind of gross one off slime character that that you sort of see them like get tried and tested. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, that's a hard one to get because it's got this like weird ability to interact directly with you, and it's kind of fucking them up. It's picking them off. What are they going to do? And they got to like trap it and they have that cartoony shit where it happens. But like all of that stuff works so well in the, in the first one. And then you get to the second one. And while it's, it's good, like I enjoy it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have the same, like, I don't know, comedic flow, that organic comedic flow, or it's just, it's just going and going and going. The scenes, the scenes are kind of cutting through. Time is passing by. The Ghostbusters are getting popular. You're right there along for the ride. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, what well, are there's you also are they... there's also the thing of them struggling right at the beginning, where they they're like, "Well, we want to do this, but uh, what is it?" Uh, Ray has to put his house in the, like his 
this mortgage like or whatever mortgage or whatever yeah 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 so so it's like on the second one they're already famous and people know them so it's it doesn't feel the same as as on the first one when it's like we either get this right or we're screwed right on the second mm -hmm. one is like well we're you know we're the ghostbusters like people know us people call us like they it, i don't know it doesn't it doesn't work as well i kind of like that they were on the cameo.com equivalent for 1989 where we're doing children's <laughs> birthday parties and the children mm -hmm. don't even want to see them yeah i don't i don't mind that part um I, I watched both of them back to back last year and i was like yeah i, I don't know i i agree that the first one has a different kind of it's a quicker more tightened energy to it and everyone plays together a little better um, but I don't know. I think that second one gets gets a little more flack than it probably deserves. I have, you know, what? I haven't seen that new one that came out, um, yeah, or actually even the Lady Ghostbusters. I watched like the first ten minutes of that, and I was like, oh, this is like a horror movie. I didn't watch anything else. Well, as soon as the women showed up, I was like, yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's enough uh, for me. I, I did see that Ghostbusters. Um, it's like remarkably bland like i think after life after life no 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 the one before that i didn't see after life female no, 2016 female. Yeah, yeah yeah it's 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 a 2016 comedy like yeah. ex it's exactly that it might Terrible. say ghostbusters on it but it's a 2016 comedy where like raunchy is mm -hmm. like uh somebody touching their armpit and smelling it like oh whoa it's like trying really hard it was just like you don't need to do this and and you can tell that a lot of it is just hey let's improvise for an hour and we'll cut whatever works and it's just right that came right <sighs> at the exact tail end of that comedy film style being popular right uh, you had bridesmaids in 2015 or 2014 yeah. or something that was wildly successful and they just thought well we'll do that again with the ghostbusters and people i think were tapped out by that point it was that yeah. movie and uh, this is 40, the Judd Apatow three hour uh, middle aged crisis piece with Paul Rudd fucking his wife for the 12th time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the that's the thing. Like uh, th those movies, they're not made anymore. I was talking to my, my girlfriend the other day about this and how uh, all of those gross out movies would be offensive now. So you can't do that anymore. Any Seth Rogen wouldn't have a career. You know, Jonah Hill wouldn't have like a comedic career now because you couldn't make fun of him because he's fat. That's offensive, right? So uh, all the jokes and all the things that you could get away with uh, in the early 2000s is I don't think you could anymore. So what is comedy even anymore, right? You have the, the Brian McBride, uh, Brian McBride, Brian McBride. No, what's his name? Uh, Danny McBride. Still, still doing his thing on HBO, uh, and that's like the only show that I can think of that kind of pushes the boundaries of what comedy is acceptable to do and it's not safe, right? Uh, I, I, I can't even think of of anything else that's like even trying to be a little punchy when it comes to comedy anymore. Uh, Mike yeah, Tyson's just... comedy podcast with Jeremy Piven. <laughs> Guess literally right. punchy <laughs> literally punchy uh i mean i just watched like toast of london fine but Very that's like show. 2000 2008 isn't it 2010 the, se the sequel to it just came out or the sequel series to toast okay. toast of fine it's fine what, what is but that? that's like I, a... I don't think i've heard of toast of london oh it's great it's uh what's his Matt name Barry. uh mad berry yeah. yeah uh he, play, but that's... he plays a stage actor yeah. um kind of in this like let's say like fake universe where uh it really matters if you're a good stage actor or not mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> stupid it's hella dumb the plot for it no i think there's plenty of good comedy uh plenty of good comedy to be made uh, i don't think that there's like there's nothing that you could do in 1985 that you can't do now uh, there might be but that's people a... to get pissed off about some of the stuff or whatever but that's but... also a tv show though i don't think that like that's it's graded in a different i think curve than what you can do in a movie like when was the last time you went to the theater to watch a comedy that well, people, you were that's like the thing is that theaters don't make money on on that shit anymore anyway so they don't why as a as a studio if you're gonna make mm -hmm. a comedy film why the fuck would you try to get it to go into a theater to compete against fucking star wars fuck that Fuck that, dude. I'm making the 17th National Lampoon's Vacation. I'm not putting it up against <laughs> fucking Star Wars. I'm going on fucking Netflix. 
I'm getting my bag and I'm going. That's like, so there's no incentive to make a comedy, right? Because right. the vast majority of the films that are going to go in theaters are going to be action films and they're going to be the huge fucking blockbusters that come out <laughs> yeah, within whatever genre it's going to be, right? Whatever fucking Christopher Nolan puts out a film, you're not mm. going to be able to rent a fucking screen because all the screens are going to be filled with Nolan. But do you there's, think there's that, no reason. That, that, do you think that Toast of London would have, be, like this season, or I guess would have been made now if it wasn't already like a a, a series that's been set up that was yeah. done before. You know, yeah. I I don't think that uh, that that uh, comedy has that appeal anymore because of what you can do with. Like I I remember seeing that series, and there's some like very uncomfortable sex scenes that happen in that show that would be seen as like that's not okay now you know on the first what do you season mean? i think it was what do when you he's mean? living it when he's living in that house and like he he has like a very uncomfortable like awkward sex scenes the the matt berry character uh you don't remember where... matt berry raping a woman savagely like yeah, deliverance here, no, style Hans, here's no, the thing not... is that the biggest yeah. tv show of all time was, of, was game of thrones and there's four graphic rape scenes in that show that are but displayed not... on screen yeah. in their entirety it's not but you it's can't not, make that stuff. No, anymore. no, no. But but it's also not like, ha ha, look at this. He's awkward. It's like, well, they're brothers and sisters, and this is terrible. Yeah. But 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 you don't see that in like the I mean, I'm not saying that you need that for a comedy to work, but I just don't <laughs> think that that those risks are being taken anymore, unless it's like an already established, like a uh, uh it's always sunny, I'm sure is doing something similar, but it's Fuck like no, something that's not. been it's going sunny for... has been terrible for 12 years. Yeah, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing new going on, and it's always sunny. They've been recycling kind of the same ideas over and over for a couple of years. But no, I don't think that there's such thing as off limits. I don't think that people actually think like that whenever they're creating that type of stuff. I think that studios are going to limit what they put out based on what's marketable and what's lucrative. And that they, there's really like rom coms don't come out anymore. Really, mm, a, a right. few every once in a while. Most shit goes direct to streaming. And, and gets turned into six episode uh, miniseries. Most shit does. If there's a movie that somebody puts across, they go, how can we turn this into a series and capitalize on this the most? And even shows like, uh, what's that fucking show that's got um, Linda Cardellini and Christina Applegate on it? Uh, it's on Netflix. It's fucking super popular or whatever. That was, uh, that was uh, originally supposed to be a movie. Uh, dead to me that's what it is dead to me that was originally supposed to be a movie about a girl that accidentally kills uh, a woman's husband while he's like jogging or whatever and then she befriends her and then eventually tries to tell her like hey i'm the guy that killed your husband accidentally but then doesn't break up the nerve and then they turn that into a tv show and break it up into episodes so like it, it all of the shit that you're seeing now uh, in theaters is holding down the fort quote unquote so much that nobody's going to make anything like these films to go into theaters and they're just going to come up with like tv shows yeah I, I mean i think the argument of you can't make this anymore especially when it comes to comedy that's like a very i think 2015 to 2018 conversation um because yeah i, I mean I, I think there's a giant industry problem that jerry kind of pointed out that is larger and kind of engulfs even that kind of conversation about what's going to be socially palatable to audiences right now or what is perceived to be. Um, it's just a matter of you're not going to get kind of movies that are typically made on a comedy budget sent out there or marketed on the same scale anymore because, right, as he was just saying, there's more money to be made in series programming. And... The, the safest, most bland people imaginable are making a lot of the decisions as far as what gets put out there. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think that it, excuse me, it is worse now than it's like ever been. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's, it's worse now than even when it was when people were just putting out everything, right? Whenever it was like fucking a dime a dozen fucking road trip films, 50 rom-coms a fucking month, uh, another Steven Seagal action film, like, that was bad this is way way worse because like like i said when we're getting these series some of them are fucking absolute shit there's great shit like there's chernobyl you know but wait you didn't like judd apatow's the bubble the bubble we'll talk about the bubble 
I know. I don't, don't want to watch that. I don't that. listen to rap. Don't make me. Don't make me watch that. Uh, or King of Staten Island. No, that that'll come up. Too, right? The oh, bubble will come King up whenever Island. we talk yeah. about uh, worst movies, because that's a jut out. That should have had like a lot of fanfare. That was his COVID movie, and it had a very stacked cast, and it was the worst, most putrid thing I've seen this year. And I knew it was going to be bad, but I put it on, and uh, it lived up to my expectations. I mean, Judd Apatow is ass, man. He is ass. I like his early... I thought it, back in the day, Knocked Up and Forgetting... Mm -hmm. Well, he produced Forgetting Sarah Marshall. 40-Year-Old um, uh, Virgin. 40-Year-Old Virgin, Virgin. That's a good one. Uh, even Funny People, I thought, mm -hmm. was good when he was like trying to ape James L. Brooks. And then he just got too up his own ass and featured too much of his family. And it just... It, yeah. it became too much. And now he they doesn't... the fuck his daughter. It seems like there might be something... I don't know. I would rather not speculate here, but no, I will speculate. But we, we could talk about <laughs> we could talk about the mathematics of camera work, right? Uh, it's something that we've talked about in cinematography before: framing things, blocking things, right? Exposing something something to somebody in a certain way so that it manipulates you, so that you're looking at it a specific way, right? Mm -hmm. And in this case, right, Jed Apatow has a show on Netflix called love in that show his daughter plays a character his daughter at the time might be like 18 or so maybe 17 maybe a little bit younger doesn't matter it's his daughter she uh she's standing out in front of an apartment you open up the shot boom we're down on the ground okay uh it's full it's it's wide okay we're gonna start slowly panning up now we're up on her feet up through her legs she's wearing short shorts scaling up her body scaling up her body now we're at her waist her tits area we're stopping a little bit now we're up to her face now boom now our whole body's in the frame there's no reason your dad should shoot you like that ever <laughs> right there's no reason for that and like in like a Kevin feminist Smith. class and like a feminist right. class to be like well this is what we call the male gaze right for the rest of us we'd be like you're a fucking pervert dude what the fuck are you doing bro that's your daughter man <laughs> it echoes a lot of like you'll see kevin smith or even jordan peterson does this where they'll like a photo of their daughter that's like a sexy photo on instagram and you'll Ugh. see oh dad liked that that's okay, great but when Kevin Smith does it, it's really he's liking Jason. Jason <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's not his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Scrooge, Christmas time classic, Armageddon, <laughs> underrated film. What? Hold on. What was the point of the Ben Affleck thing again? What? What? Oh, we I don't just think that got resolved. About how Hans Hans could have done the commentary for Mass State Lottery in Spanish, mm -hmm. but it would have been funny if he would have just got drunk. And then I said, have you heard Ben Affleck just get drunk and do commentary for Armageddon and talk about yeah. how much he hates the core of the plot? And then we played the part where he was talking about how he hates the idea that NASA wouldn't send ast astronauts to drill a hole in an asteroid, which is the entire plot of the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then how Michael Bay kept telling him, like, shut up, no one cares. And then he goes, he's drunk as fuck, but Affleck is. And so the, the, that that was the end of that. <laughs> you drunk motherfucker. Dude. Should I play uh, it? Should I play it again? He also bashes the movie on the Chasing Amy commentary track with Kevin Smith, where they're like, well, now you're a big star. <laughs> And he's just shitting on the movie. And it's the same company. It's all Miramax. And here, here Hans has the, the commentary track pulled up again. Oil drillers to become astronauts than it was to train astronauts to become oil drillers. And he told me to shut, shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he's like, you know, Ben, just shut up, okay? You know, this is a real plan, all right? I was like, you mean it's a real plan at NASA to train oil drillers? He was like, just shut your mouth. <laughs> See, here's where we demonstrate that because Bruce is going to tell the guys that they did a bad job of building the drill tank. He did a piss. See, he's a salt of the earth guy. And the NASA nerdonauts don't, uh, don't understand uh, his salt of the earth ways, his rough and tumble ways. Like somehow they can like the heavy breathing as he, as he thinks about what he's going to say. Like yeah. What makes a good tranny? <laughs> Laughing to himself. Yeah. <laughs> like eight whole months, as if that's not enough time to learn how to drill a hole. But in a week, we're going to learn how to be astronauts. A week. Now you know how to fly into space? I need my guys. Why do you need them? They're the best. 
Everyone's the best. Why are they the best? I don't know. They just are. I'm only the best because I work with the best. You don't trust me. <laughs> the, the line. The line is I am I am the best because I work with the best. <laughs> what the fuck that means. They don't know Jack about drilling. I mean, this is a little bit of a logic stretch, let's face it. They don't know Jack about drilling. How hard can it be? <laughs> That's the core the of the film. <laughs> and turn it on. <laughs> Even the grill at the ground and turning hole. on. There's a lot you gotta know about. And when you're gonna break, snap off an edge in a tranny on a corner of a hot pipe. He, he makes gonna get a gas such a good like, fucking yeah, point well, that I think yeah. anybody the like in their rocket. adult age watching this film for the first time would fucking know is that at NASA, they have some of the brightest brains on the fucking planet. These people absolutely know how to like construct a drill. These people absolutely know how to use it. And more importantly, they could use it in space way better than a roughneck could. <clears throat> but this film is based on the idea that some fucking 10 roughnecks from like 20 miles from where I live would just be like, huh. Them, them astronauts trying to drill a hole? Shit! <laughs> well, it's what we were talking about at the beginning of this episode, right? Like the roofers and like the carpenters are just getting wasted. Yeah. They're just like, I'll just do it. Yeah. <laughs> so you get the, you go up and you fucking look at like the video of the astronauts on the asteroid. And it's just like eight dudes standing around with Modelo pointing at the hole at the same <laughs> time with high vis jackets on. Like, yeah, man, I don't know. I guess it's supposed to go down and spin. <laughs> just, they have a corrido playing on their like their their <laughs> helmet, just <laughs> the narco fucking songs playing in their helmet. Yeah, <laughs> it's just six Mexicans. <laughs> 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 they come back and they're like, "So you guys drilled a hole into the asteroid? No? Okay. No. What did you do? Do I fix the plumbing? I made the tile. <laughs> I do the drywall. We built the house. <laughs> There's a fucking did you need house. A house? <laughs> There's a fucking house on it. <laughs> it's an overground <laughs> pool <laughs> now. Yeah. How, how did you get grass on there? Oh, you say, you say, go and do the work. I do." <laughs> That's twenty five dollar, yeah. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, dude, that was horribly oh. racist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that version eventually. That'll be Netflix's reimagining of Armageddon. Um, <clears throat> all right. I'd like, I would like to think that your show will eventually be popular enough that someone will retroactively animate a bunch of the better imaginative pieces from your show and that this will end up in a great cartoon someday. Yep. This will be the Ricky Gervais show on HBO. Hey, <laughs> that's what, that's what will happen. Wasn't that the biggest podcast before Joe Rogan's podcast? Yeah, I think so. That's wild. That's and wild. He, how big Joe Rogan is. <laughs> It's now Joe well, they had people, a... people do Joe Rogan's episodes now, and it's the worst shitty, yeah. gross flash animation, choppy fucking, uh, like, paper mache, not paper mache, just really awful, gross stuff. What were you going to say, Hans? Well, they had the whole HBO show where they sent Carl Pilkington to mm -hmm. go around and the world to see his autistic reactions, right? So I'm, I'm looking forward to me being the autistic man that reacts to things Ooh, around the world that would be great. yes yes look i know okay i'm not taking anything away from you guys donors keep donating <laughs> donating to to low res patreon i'm going to start a patreon soon and what i'm going to do is i want to we're going to raise twenty five thousand dollars that should be enough to get Hans several plane tickets to undisclosed locations. We're yeah. not going to tell him where they are. We're not. We're not going to give him any information. We're just going to let him pack his bags, mm. and we're gonna we're gonna send him on a four day vacation to somewhere several times in a year. Episode no, one. No, it's just going to be Ukraine. It, it's just it's, it's just going to be like which cake is going to kill him from a diabetic coma. Uh, so it's just me trying <laughs> that, no, different. <laughs> That's like the trip element of it is you're going to sit down at a restaurant wherever you go and you have to eat a whole cake. You have to eat an entire piece of fruit. That's how you're going to be compensated for your time yeah. doing the show as well is that whole. You just cake. have an insulin pen just in case I fucking pass out. <laughs> a diabetic abroad. <laughs> 
What do we got here? Oh, back, <laughs> back to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, I think that's the perfect close to the episode here, fellas. Oh, yeah. All right. That has been. Uh, well, no, Jerry, why don't you quickly promote um, what you're what you're up to? Uh, you know, if you want to find me, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, we're on Bloom Online on Instagram. We're on Bloom Online or on Twitch where I'm Bloom Online, but. Just Bloom it's, Online, not just Bloom online. online. Yeah, that's right. That's it. That's it. I don't do much. I'm a blue collar boy. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Hans, you have a new you Twitter banner wait, I'm hearing. Hold on. Wait a minute. You guys don't say that. Like when I go to work, I say, hey, blue collar guys. And like I shake their hand, like all firm. And I go like lunch pail. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you wear a that? blue shirt to work and pop the car and go, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hey. You. That's your, has your, a little patch with Jerry on it. I know. No, I had, to, I had to buy a patch because the jacket I had used to have a patch that has a weird, like, discolored area. I decided to buy, I bought an Akira patch. So I had this, like, the pill that says uh, good for good health, for bad health. for education on it. And this dude today was like, what the fuck does that mean? And I was like, I don't think we're real at all, man. I don't think we were ever real. And he's just like, this- what? And I just kept talking. <laughs> I don't think we were ever real. They think I'm crazy there. You're going to try to explain anime to a blue collar guy? <laughs> to a 55-year-old <laughs> drunk guy? Yeah. No, I just gave him that like weird, like, I don't think we're real, man. I don't think we were ever real. And then I just kept going. And he, so like I said, one, they think I'm nuts. Is that one of them tentacle cartoons from Japan? Well, so you jack off to that? <laughs> what part of the pill makes you horny? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you if you want to follow my Halloween Town uh uh Twitter page uh H4 H4 that's uh that's so crazy. Yeah. All yeah. right. <clears throat> well, that has been movies for this week. Jerry, thank you for popping on with us uh to talk about S- Scrooge and only Scrooge. Um oh, yeah. I think you're coming up. You might be real close now to the line for most guest appearances. It's neck and neck between you and Jake Miller right now i think there's like one or two one or two episodes separating you guys so we'll see we'll see how the year shapes up all right that has been movies for this week thank you for listening